go. Good evening guys, I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV and tonight is the OC Show Season 4 Episode 13 and I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV. Of course, Chiro, uh, Atlas is not here today, is working way too hard on some of the reviews on uh, revolution.it, uh, his website, so he could not join us tonight. But tonight we still have some of our awesome guests uh, that are usually on the show, Bilzoid and Tullius. Hey, what's up guys? Hello. Hey. <laughs> So, today we have a lot of things to talk about, especially because, uh, well, today is a Coffee Lake uh, launch, but uh, we missed the show last week as well because uh, I was actually stuck in Russia and uh, the planning and the internet were not very uh, uh, keen on us, so we were not able to, uh, to do an OC show there. Uh, so, today is going to be two weeks of news, so we won't be doing a score update of the competition. Especially as well because last Friday there was so many competition ending up <laughs> and if we start doing the the full overview of all the competition we might need like a good four hours so we might uh, we're still thinking about thinking about doing a special uh, segment just for the competitions and uh, maybe along with uh, with tool use and build and some of the guys so we will be able to to do that in the next few days uh still need to confirm on uh, on exactly how that's gonna be but tonight the oc show season 4 episode 13 is all about the new cpus that uh that have been launched um we want to get the first one tool use you want to get the uh, x299 or build uh, build well, so news uh, from last week skylake x Okay, yeah, yeah. This is actually news, news actually from last week. So um, they, well, everybody knows now already, but they lost the 14 core, 16 core, 18 core, and there was absolute devastation on <laughs> on the board. <laughs> just numbers and records just fell. It was, it was quite the sight. Uh, and it's happened again today with Coffee Lake as well. So uh, incredible amount of action actually going on. I mean, just the sheer amount of submissions and if you want to sit and discuss and break down what actually went, to, you know, it takes to get those numbers, it's another show right in itself almost. Yeah, <laughs> But yeah, crazy stuff. I mean, um, sure, the 7960X and the 7980X, absolute, absolute powerhouses. They've, yeah, just complete, complete. Like, like, like I mean, I think pretty much everybody's come come kind of to the consensus that if you want the absolute fastest, there is no that there, there is no replacement. I mean, you know, just you need the 18 cores. But yeah, lots and lots of action. If you actually look at the if you actually look at the submissions, that there were what seven world records and 27 global first places. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> but there, there was three CPUs, right? 14, 16, and 18 cores. So 14, 7940 X, yeah. 7960X, 16, and 7980 XE. And Right, yeah, and these right. are really categories that haven't had any competition before because how well, many especially the 18 cores, cores exist <laughs> <Core, yeah. laughs> or so, how many unlocked 16s or how many unlocked 18 cores exist right it's so yeah it's not surprising that you know intel's latest and greatest had such a great showing um, yeah they also it's like we, we can see that the 7980 xe um that is the new king of 3D Mark CPUs. It is so. Uh, yeah. yeah, 3D Mark is as annoying to bench as ever <laughs> in some ways. <laughs> the power consumption these things put down under liquid nitrogen is also absolutely insane. Actually, it's we saw funny. that on the uh, multi-core madness event last week. Um, guys, the guys were hitting positive temperatures with the LN2 pots. Well, in like LN2 pot base <laughs> minus 100, CPU core plus 20, like <laughs> absolutely insane power consumption from these things. Huge heat output. Um, easily like you know a thousand watts just going to your CPU. Um, that's Ooh, including the core, RM yeah. losses, but yeah, th these things yeah. are absolutely that's monstrous. Um, and yeah, they're very, like, I have to say I want one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, they're just so, it's so much power behind them, you know, and especially yeah, for somebody like me who's interested in like 3D benchmarks. Um, I also have a history of benching high-end desktop for like ages and ages and ages. I actually stand, started on the platform. So... You know, it's like the newest and uh, the latest and greatest is back on the block. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. And yeah, even to, even today's lunch doesn't change anything on top that. Top for. Like, 
Yeah. No, it doesn't actually. It, it, yeah. it totally doesn't. I mean, for the, especially for like ultra high end performance, at least on your CPU benchmarks and stuff like Cinebench and all. I mean, it's still, these guys are absolute kings. There's just no getting away from that. So, yeah, Coffee Lake is a lot of fun. I mean, it's definitely going to be one of the most competitive categories, I think, you know, going forward for the next couple of years at least. You're going you're gonna to be seeing a lot of the six core, 12 thread benchmarks become. Basically, it's going to be what the four core eight thread was for like the last yeah. two years. Yeah. In, Intel pretty much, I actually, like from a benchmarker's perspective, um, we are kind of moving away from Skylake X here, but yeah. from a benchmarker's perspective, um, the coffee like pretty much solidifies the 7700K and the 7740X as X. the true kings of the four core category for yeah. pretty much forever. Unless we see some crazy, like, unless AMD somehow manages to make a crazy quad-core APU thing that does, <laughs> like, 6 plus gigahertz on liquid nitrogen. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's going to happen, but, yeah. It, it's, well, it's okay not to necessarily dream. right now. Not necessarily right now. I could still see them, because AMD doesn't have a habit of locking chips down. Yeah. So we might see, like, a Ryzen, not the... Because there's a refresh of Ryzen supposedly coming very soon for next year. I don't think that's going to be it. The thing, whatever comes after that, we might see a four core that could actually compete with the 7700K again. But until then, I don't think we're going to be seeing any more, like, we're not going to be seeing any high power four cores for at least for HW Bot again. That's true. That's true. So, yeah, so last week we had the 7940X, 7960X, 7980XC launch. Uh, seven world record were taken down, 27 global first place were taken down as well. That was just insane. So it's basically like smashing everything in pretty much all the CPU categories. And today uh, was the launch of Coffee Lake. Uh, so basically the Core i7 8700K, Core i5 8600K, and Core i3 8350K. Uh, so yeah, if you look at just the six core category, which is uh, a new segment that's going to be uh, developing more and more for sure. Uh, it's like two world records are down and nine global first place are actually... Uh, already taken and we are just at the first uh, at the first day of launch so I guess uh, by the time people get in there and like people that don't uh, that are not seated so people that can that have to buy the hardware and so on uh, we might see uh, more and more uh, scores in the near future and we can see that it's uh, once again uh, a very massive takeover by uh, Asus ROG on the on the motherboard side uh, except one so all but one I've been taken by uh, Asus ROG, so it's the uh, maximum CPU frequency, uh, which was made at 7.4 gigahertz by uh, Kowan Wang, which is uh, from the team of Top PC, I guess. Uh, he's from Taiwan. Yeah, and he benched uh, for MSI with the MSI, MSI uh, Z370 Godlike Gaming. It's just kind of unfortunate that max CPU frequency doesn't really need a great motherboard. <laughs> <laughs> so well, you know, we know. I mean, uh, from the from the video from Roman that he did post or, uh, today for the lunch as well, he was yeah, mentioning that they plus. were in the HQ at Asus to put up some good, some some strong scores on Skydeck X. So that's why they actually, if you look at Skydeck X, it used to be a lot of um, Asus Asus thing, and now it's all ASRock, except just a few of uh, of the Asus one and or, or EVGA. And then for for the uh, Coffee Lake now it's uh, it's back to to being Asus. So that that the Roman mentioned that in the video it says ah yeah I was in Taiwan in DHQ to bench Skylake X and Coffee Lake. So that was like they were putting some effort to to be there. So that's very good. Yeah, to, and, um, and he's even mentioned. Uh, he's even actually mentioned that they went through several CPUs and then from there they actually bin some more and then they only use the top, you know, like just the absolute top, which obviously you do. So serious amounts of binning even at HQ, like they were binning bin chips already. So you're looking for the top five or the top four, you know, like the top 2% and that's basically it. And yeah. So if you want to know if you've got a great CPU, well, if you're in this ballpark in terms of results, you know, you've got yourself that, you know, it's pretty yeah. much gold. <laughs> yeah, you've got a top five percent CPU. So yeah, that's uh, that's quite insane to see like all those uh, those cores and all those things being uh, being launched. Uh, if we 
for for Skylake X, uh, there was the performance matters uh, performance matter multi core madness Moscow last week. Um, just to close on Skylake X, uh, that was uh, quite impressive to see uh, Wizard T bench bros and Smoke uh, overclocking the 14, 16, and 18 cores. Uh, if you guys want to see the replay, the video is on the, on YouTube. We'll post all the link uh, in the in the next few uh, minutes on the live chat. And the the fact that. Uh, it was like three hours, and they still managed to to push uh, to push things out, even though they did not add the CPU in end before. Uh, but you were you were part of the of the live show and commenting as well. Um, uh, what what would be like the a, a quick uh, incentive for people to go see the, the the full live? How how was the evening for you? I mean, like it was awesome to see, basically. Um, well, we didn't really get that much time on the, the overclockers screens, unfortunately. Um, I would have preferred to see more, you know, focus on like the bio settings they were doing, but that, that's from more my perspective. We did see some crazy fast Cinebench runs. Like, have you ever, like literally seconds to finish. Like, if you've benched Cinebench on something, some, you know, four core, eight core, maybe even a 10 core, doesn't compare just doesn't <laughs> compare it's I, I re insane i, re I remember we were we were like uh, following on wizard he was like oh yeah it's 4.4 like 4.4 thousand points like uh, 4.4k yeah. points like oh yeah sure why not switch to smoke screens like yeah 5.2k <laughs> like what the f yeah absolutely like massive scores out of those chips um you also like wizard he actually showed how how high the temperature of the chips gets because um, they weren't really benching like for competitive scores. They weren't trying to beat each other. It was just showing off what the chips can do and testing out uh, what, what the chips were capable of. And so, you know, you can see exactly what I mean when I say those chips put out a ton of heat because Wizardy has a... Wizardy shows off how basically the CPU, there's a few cores doing 20 degrees and his thermometer on the uh, of the LN2 pod it's is like showing minus 60. 90. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, yeah. A absolutely insane um and it's not a bad mount it's just that do cpu put out so much so much like, yeah i know it's power. like actually it's like recently somebody mentioned to me it's like could you maybe file down the top few layers of silicon to try get closer to the transistor layer of the cpu because you have a lot of padding on top of a chip right because all the transistors are on the bottom of it so it's like file down the top layers of silicon to try lower the core temperatures even lower. Because the, the cold bug on these, right, is like minus 100. Around sort of minus 100-ish. Yeah. And if you could actually bench them at a close, like if you could drop another, say, you know, 40 degrees off of what these things regularly hit with the IHS, with the two layers of thermal paste, and then... Um, just, you know, the issues of running these normally. It's like, if you could drop, say, 40 degrees off of that, you could see maybe another 100, 200 megahertz and your power supply on fire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, hopefully that did not happen at the event, though. <laughs> no, no, no. The power supply is actually held up great. The, and the it was C20 only 1,200 PS. watts. I mean, we were seeing people looking for uh, 1,500 and, uh, and 1,600 watts. I think I recently... Me and Lumi had a discussion about Seasonic power supplies recently, and apparently the overcurrent protection on the 1200 watt uh, power supplies from Seasonic is at like 1600 watts output or something. Because what you got to understand, it's like if you look at a lot of these really like, if you look at like a 1600 watt rated gold power supply, right? Mm -hmm. If you just lowered the, car, the, the, the efficient, if you lowered the power rating of the power supply, it would basically become a 80 plus platinum. So basically what ultimately limits the capabilities of a power supply is kind of the efficiency rating, but how much it can actually cool. So if you build a 1200 watt pl platinum PSU or titanium PSU, right, and you put enough cooling in there for 1600 watts at like gold efficiency, then you can't really overload the power supply until it's way outside its actual rating range, which like, you know, I would be see, interested so, like, to see that. Actually, I would be interested in uh, how much power. I really can be wish, like, I, I've I've really wondered why it's we don't see a lot of PSU reviewers do OCP tests. Like, where does because the you power need, supply? You need to have the workload to trigger them as well. Well, a lot of PSU reviewers manage to run the twelve two thousand watt PSU, the Superflower, 
It's like, you know, Johnny Guru should definitely have the equipment to overload any 1200 watt, except maybe a Sonic. <laughs> so that'd be really cool to, to, to see. But yeah, also the other thing is like these chips just put down so much heat that they were benching at like 1.5 volts, right? Like we didn't really see anybody go over 1.5. Well, the the issue is like you cannot increase the the V core that much because there's yeah, so much you cores. Can't cool it. <laughs> yeah, you cannot cool it. There's so much core; it uses too much power anyway. It's like, which is really surprising to me because I'm used to benching like on like even on X99, I'm benching like 1.45 on water. Yeah, and then you look at like you know X299, and it's like yeah, you bench 1.45 on liquid nitrogen because <laughs> you just can't. Cool the damn things. So Star Bomber on the live chat says, uh, just before the PSU LN2 pot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, water cool. Nah, like we we've not had water cooled power supplies yet, so we, we can no, step there it was up one. slowly. There oh, was coolant one. Was. Coolant there was one. Coolant. Yeah, coolant had coolant one. one. But oh. I mean by the reliability of coolant's PSU, I would never <laughs> use that. <laughs> I mean I, I bet it wouldn't like I guess somebody could like retrofit a water cooler inside a Seasonic somehow, but <laughs> and then raise the OCP rate. Like you could technically mod a power supply for way more power output. I wouldn't because recommend could, doing it. I mean, the fact that you could, I mean, uh, the 2000 watts are for sale only in countries that have to have 220, you know, and that's kind 220 of like- 220 and 240 volt 240, yeah, AC yeah. because yeah. US Just, circuits wouldn't take you'll, it. You'll, You'll melt US circuits exactly. But like, yeah. <clears throat> um, technically you could go a lot higher considering like you've got most if you say think about okay, you give it a dedicated 15 amp uh, breaker at like 240. You could do a PSU that is a higher rating, but I, I just don't see the point of uh, there being a market for one. I, of those. I'm thinking like take a 1600 watt EVGA, right? Swap yeah. the fan out for like a 7k RPM delta and yep. lift the OCP to like two and a half thousand watts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, the, 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 there's uh, some good point on the live chat that uh, those PSUs are mainly for the market that have 220 volts. The main reason is that if you put that on the one you know, on a one ten volt, and you and you draw that much power, you might actually burn some of the wires on the way in. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so like could definitely trip breakers for sure. I mean, even the like the the sixteen hundred watt EVGA I have, like that comes with one of the fattest power supply cables I've ever seen. I like the, the wires EVGA are so huge. thin. It's, it's insane. Yeah, EVGA so actually, I have the same one. It's the basic, but it's the Leadex one. It's the Leadex sixteen hundred instead of the EVGA one. Well, um, that's the same. Flower, that's the same manufacturer same. behind. So. Same, Superflower same, yeah. makes both of those. So, yeah, yeah. yeah um, but the cable's fat is fat as hell. I know exactly what. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like you're basically using like those high-end audio amplifier connectors <laughs> and uh, cables. It's it's crazy. I, I <laughs> wonder if one day we would have like this uh, someone to be as as crazy as doing this. Uh, you know, you remove the oven plug and you plug the yeah. the, the PSU oh. in there. <laughs> So it's like, uh, I know in France that used to be like 380 volts. And I think in uh, in US it's like 4, 440 or 440. something. Yeah, yeah 440. 440? Yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, it's insane to see this. But that's that's cool. I mean, it's like, uh, the, the only thing that will happen in the next few years, and I'm pretty sure about that in the next three years, that we won't have more cores. We'll have more efficient multiple core CPUs. Because there's so much to do. I mean, there's no way you can cram like a, 18 core CPU in a laptop anytime soon. I mean, I, I AMD is still like I know Intel is almost approaching like thousand watt power draws on their CPUs, okay, but yeah, under LN2, of course, eh? Yeah, but and then on air cooling, you're still seeing them hit like 600, 600, 680. Yeah, easy. water yeah. water cooling, you're seeing them do almost 600 watts. So, but AMD is kind of topped out around 400 watts right now, which I guess if they raise the frequencies, they might end up in a situation similar to Intel. But if they don't manage to break that 4 gigahertz barrier, an AMD 24 core could run 4 gigahertz at like, I don't know, 700 watts <laughs> yep. Yep. For, for daily, which, yeah, totally coolable. <laughs> <laughs> You'd need one hell of a water loop for that. that, that that's okay. I, I guess that we will see someone doing it maybe in the near future. Uh, I guess that people were so looking to remove the OCP and all that in the in the PSUs to 
to push that like at at the max they can. I'm actually surprised on how well it does clock, even though that's a, a FI VR inside and a, and a lot of cores. I'm still surprised how high it can go. Uh, I mean, well, the fiber is absolutely necessary. Like, yeah, yeah, could yeah, you no, imagine yeah, having no a choice. VRM that, like, on a motherboard, like X299 motherboard VRM size, and then consider trying to shove a thousand watts through that? Like, I know <laughs> we've had GPUs that have done that, but th that's like half the graphics card is a VRM at that point, right? And then you have these motherboards where it's this tiny little strip between the memory slots. It's like, yeah, we're we're gonna push a thousand watts through that at like one and a half volts. There's no. an, there's another <laughs> um, design restriction as well. Is that if you need to put to bring that much power into that specific location, you cannot just use the package for it. You have to you have to deliver that as close to the C, to the to the to the where it's gonna be used as possible. And and well, yeah, well we we have some advantage and disadvantage uh, for the uh, for the fiber, but uh, yeah, actually that I don't think there's a lot of way around that for I call count CPUs. Yeah, I mean, the, the fiber is definitely absolutely necessary for, for the Intel stuff, because yeah. that's the only way they can get the current draw low enough. There was this... Um, I'm surprised we, like, I'm surprised they haven't, like, started to move over. I guess for servers, it currently still works at 2 volts fine, but for, like, the extreme stuff, we'd the fiber, you'd be ideally want, like, 3 volts fiber voltage. Input like you'd want like three volts input because that would cut your current draw by another fifty percent off of what we're pushing right now. <laughs> but like that would need a complete redesign because the whole idea of the fiber is it fits in the CPU because it's switching from like two volts to something slightly below that. Yeah, so, and it's and switching that closer to where it's being used as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Less, and, uh, and it, yeah. It would require a hell of a lot of work to make it work on a higher voltage. And really, it's like we're the only people who need that. So I can't see <laughs> Intel really bothering with like making a three volt fiber standard. Yeah, th there was this. There was, I think, a British company or something. I'm not too sure where, where they're from. A company called Eurocom. I remember because uh, professionals here. They used to buy. I've, I've seen them here in in India and. Uh, they were some beastly freaking laptops, like seriously oh, fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do custom made laptops. So uh, you can actually yeah, go to them and say, I want like, these, 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 these in the laptop and say, okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, and they actually do it. Like they had like freaking six core CPUs, like proper desktops. I remember they were doing Xeon, like 14 core yeah, Xeon they were laptops. They were doing yeah. portable workstation For... with like a dual quadro inside in MXM, stuff like this. <laughs> yeah. That was completely insane. <laughs> Thing. And th those things, yeah, but those things weigh like 10 kilograms. Like, you couldn't call yeah, that a it's, laptop. It's not, it was, it's not a laptop. It's like a, a PC it, it you had can a screen transport. and a keyboard, but that was the only thing that it shared with a laptop. <laughs> and man, that must be so freaking hot and throttling and so noisy and all at the same time. It's like, oh my God, that, that's crazy. Yeah, but all but right. I mean, if you need a workstation on, on portable workstation, then <laughs> what else are you going to do? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've actually this... seen them, and it blew me away for the first time when I saw them. And I saw them with, uh, like, this guy who does, who does like, uh, big uh, tiled displays and stuff like that, and, like, other kinds of video work, like uh, like marketing and ad work and stuff like that. So he needed a mad-ass machine to drive, I don't know, what off. Yeah, this is it. Okay. And... Oh, yeah, you're back. I, I <laughs> you, you get cut out. I was like, no, don't crash. <laughs> uh, okay so that's a lot of things about Skylake X if you guys want to uh, to go see the uh, the live replay of the performance matter night we discussed extensively with Bildzoid and uh, Usten from Pudget System about uh, all the latest information from the CPUs and from the platform and about the overclockers with RT, Ben, Burst and Smoke I'm actually posting the link in the live chat so you guys can uh, can keep that in the um, in the back of your history, and then that should be uh, that should be good enough for everyone to uh, to get. Uh, let's talk about uh, Coffee Lake now. So Coffee Lake, uh, the i7 8700K, um, i5 8600K, and the i3 8350K. So these ones are unlocked CPUs. Once again, yes, we have an i3 unlocked for the second time in a row, which is uh, yeah, but it's a, like a miserable i3. <laughs> it's a four four. <laughs> It's, it's a 4.4. Four, four. I wonder how that's going to uh, compare to some of the uh, other four-core CPUs, even though that's the new architecture and so on. <laughs> we'll see. It's I guess like, that... 
that not that many people tried that uh, that CPU too much, but uh, I guess we have to, to wait. But a few we, days. we already know that Coffee Lake is pretty much. It does seem like they did make some improvement over uh, KB Lake, a little bit um, in IPC, but ultimately it's it's just Coffee Lake. I mean, Coffee yeah. Lake's just KB Lake with more cores, yeah. and that basically means that i3 four core four thread CPU is in the same situation that like a 7600K was in, where it's just really uncompetitive in on HW Bot unless there's a competition it's, where it's like like there's a lot of competitions like there's the ROG OC showdown right now where it's you need to run the first stage on a four core CPU and it's XTU. So there the 8350K kinda helps because there's not that many four cores that are good for XTU and it has the advantage of being, you know, the latest generation from Intel, which XTU always favors those CPUs. <laughs> so because like a 7600K can beat a 4790K in XTU. It won't beat it in anything else, but it will in XTU. So yep. 8350K is kind of like for competitions, it's not too bad. But if you're looking at actual like, you know, every like all the other benchmarks like Cinebench and all that, the 7700K with its extra threads just wins um, on those. Yeah. yeah. Does, but yeah. and the 8600k is in a similar situation because it's the first locked six core yeah well no six core six thread it's unlocked but a similar situation it's not competitive in six core categories because everything else has more threads so you have like like the 5820k has more threads a 5930k has more threads the 7800 the 7800x has more threads but then we get the 8700K, which is the new six-core king. Yeah. Um, it made the 7800X irrelevant in a record three months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, no, that, that's, that's, that's going to happen anyway with the, with the CPU. It's like, I, I do feel that, that this platform, Coffee Lake, is actually about to stay longer than Z170 and Z270. I hope so. Uh, but once again, it's like I'm. It's good to see like new stuff being out. Uh, we know that the die is a little bit bigger as well because you need to commit for two more two more cores in that. Um, but I, it's always tricky to see like okay, new hardware. What can we get from it? And I was actually thinking that Z three seventy and Coffee Lake, I could actually buy this platform, which uh, something I said with uh, <laughs> with Kaby Lake and that did not do, but. <laughs> I no, uh, this one's definitely got got me also kind of tweaked because six cores for most people as a, a you know six core twelve thread that's quite a quite a fair amount of power and given the clocks that we're seeing you know there's a good chance that we can run four point seven four point eight gigahertz on water cooling very comfortably and things so yeah this this it Actually, does make I, I remember Roman saying that like uh, Der Bauer in his video that. For air cooling, water cooling, these six cores should be hitting anything between 4.8 and 5.2 regularly. Yeah, which is yeah. very so, good, and that's gonna be nice because we. It, what 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 is happening is that we were locked on four core and four core hit rate for like years, like literally years on the mainstream market, and then now we have yeah. uh, Ryzen, which has have a lot of cores as well, and now we have the uh, the Coffee Lake ones. The thing is, as the the market share for these like higher core count i won't say high core count because then we're not talking about like a 10 core and, and plus that but like uh like there's gonna be more and more games making use of at least four cores or something uh or some of the stuff to be uh to be more spread out on different oh cores. yeah oh yeah but the You're thing is for for vr uh the uh the i the higher frequency thing would be actually something that is welcome and because they cannot really spread that load over, over multiple cores as for as for now, as for now because they need to be super reactive and they cannot wait the few uh yeah they can't wait for the yeah. threads to synchronize no. so that could be very something very interesting that we might we might end up with not spreading multi-threaded uh, workload, but have like okay this one core is dedicated to do the physics this one core is dedicated to do the the vr sensor this this uh, core or thread is dedicated to this specific thing as well so we might have yeah. some compartments like compartmentation thing which is something that amd did on uh they did on is that thread reaper that uh, you can target for all the cores in one die which is on the package 
oh, or yeah, yeah. to spread that out as a multi-thread thing. So do you yeah, do you they, target they do the, the yeah? Do you prefer they targeting the, the multi thing, the... or you prefer targeting a, a specific die on the on the package? Yeah, because they do have that issue with the whole Infinity Fabric from die to die being quite a lot of latency. So, yeah, but I think, um, at least from the gamer's perspective, the 8600K is the, the new 2500K. Like, it's yeah. the new 2500K because it's a big jump over everything we've seen before. Um, it's fast. It's got Honestly, six cores. It's it's not hyper-threaded, so you always have six cores, which, like, hyper-threading is... It works great most of the time, but there's some scenarios where hyper-threading just doesn't do anything or actually regresses performance. <laughs> um, yeah. They're really rare, those yeah. scenarios. It's they are really but rare, but they do exist. So overall, an 8600K is just straight up better than a 7700K was. Um, yeah, which... Absolutely true. So basically, we're seeing Intel shift like the multi-core, uh, the 7700K multi-core performance down a notch um, by moving it to the i5. The price crept up a little bit for the i5, but it's still an i5 price range processor. So I think this this is the best i5 we've seen <laughs> in several years. Oh yeah, and also considering that you know a lot of the AAA games have no problems using six and even eight cores. Like if you look at Battlefield or any one of these guys. They're more than happy to use. Yeah, but then you also have the AAA titles that are like uh, yeah, the, the exact well. opposite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, but, often you see like MMOs and uh, real-time strategy games where it's yeah, like, well, it runs true. on one core, deal with yeah. it. Yeah, that's true. But more and more cases are being made for like, you know, more and more cores. So it's no longer that, yeah, okay, you know, you, you buy a four core and you're like, yeah, that's all I need. Sure, it'll work and it'll do everything, but today, yeah, there, there's definitely a case for, you know, a six core or a eight core gaming setup as well. That's, yeah, yeah. that is. I think, uh, like, I think actually the 8600K is really competitive with Ryzen until you look at like more heavy streamer style yeah. workloads. Yeah. yeah. Where, you know, eight no hyper threading versus. Uh, well, eight with hyper threading versus six no hyper threading, then like Ryzen wins that. Yes, yeah, which is why I'm still going to be upgrading my personal rig to Ryzen, um, because it's like I just want more threads. I don't really care for more single core speed. But yeah. if you look at like Ryzen six core versus this six core, then it's this is better for games. Like it, it just it straight is. up is. It is. Um, it is. So, yeah, but the, the other issue is the Z370 platform is overall more expensive as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, because you can get, like, relative, like, you can get really cheap motherboards for Ryzen that yeah. still allow there's, you to do some overclocking. Price cuts coming the, already, right? What? For Ryzen. I think the spice cuts incoming already for Ryzen. The Are there? Yeah. I'm not seeing anything. Because yeah. the 1800X, I heard, is dropping or has dropped to... 400 or just under 400 in the states which is yeah but the 1800x is always just weird true but the, like the it's following it's basically what i've heard is it's going to follow through the entire range so there's there are price cuts coming from what i'm hearing for uh for amd uh, yeah. That's, yeah that's definitely a new game changer as well for the um for the market especially for the for the six core things On, honestly we're, we're seeing like ridiculous amounts of competition like, progress like, like, <laughs> yeah. 2017 2017 is by far this year yeah then we've seen since sandy it's, bridge i have it's literally i mean i was actually reading Armin tech and even uh even ian over there commented that we've had more cp launches this year than we've had in the last like decade in like a single year <laughs> I, I so i need breathing time i need to catch up <laughs> like, i mean I it sucks to be a journalist i'm worried this year. we won't see it slow down yeah, <laughs> like I don't think we'll see it slow down because we have another Ryzen coming next year. <laughs> it's like and, and that's what happened though in this competition. Yeah, I know. This is this is a really this is really exciting. You know, it's not a case of um, j just. I'm not gonna say wait for Ryzen. I think ultimately we're still like we're gonna see progress and it's gonna be fast, but it's not gonna be like. I still don't think we're going to be seeing as big jumps as we saw this year because multi-threaded performance right now has basically gone up by fifty percent plus across okay. the board. Easy. Right. If you're looking at the high-end desktop stuff, you're seeing up to like plus eighty percent, eighty percent more cores. Yeah. Um, so clock for clock, you just have eighty percent more performance. And then on mainstream, you're looking at like plus fifty across the board. So 
Yeah, it's, well, unless you're looking at AMDs where it's like plus 100% because FX was so bad. <laughs> but it, it is, it's an exciting time. It is very exciting. Um, I'm, you know, it, it's like Coffee Lake is a really cool platform. Um, it is. It is definitely a very cool platform. I'm looking forward to benching this one. Definitely am. And that's going to, that's going to be fun. And uh, it's, it clocks well, actually, like it's launched and we yeah. have like 7.4. Yeah, already, I mean, so. Intel has... Intel has polished that 14 nanometer process to yeah. some also, incredible yeah. clock speeds. <laughs> yeah. Also, where these CPUs will really start making a dent, you're gonna see a lot of these. You know, the algorithmic trading, the HFT machines and stuff like the high, like the like the really high core clock uh, banking right, machines yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, these CPUs are gonna be massive hits in that segment. Like definitely, yeah. Because yeah, because that's all about clock speed. Is, yeah, that if you if like. I'm sure like guys must guys must be like that they they must literally be almost getting wet with the thought of 5.2 gigahertz <laughs> like literally <laughs> I mean they might even like phase change some of these to run like 5 plus well, Actually, 5 that would be awesome if you can scale with fast change because that would bring yeah. back a, a complete part of the of the enthusiast market on the overclocking side that completely disappeared disappeared yeah, it's like That's it was like a do water cooling and then go LN2, and no one else was doing fast change. There was so much things going on on, on the fast change uh, community as well. It's like, it, like a, a, a part of the of the community completely like vanished, and just actually some of them just moved back to water cooling, and some of those some, some of them just moved to to LN2. Yeah. All right, guys. Hey, guys. Uh, I guess we could talk four hours about Coffee Lake. Uh, if you guys on the live chat want to see uh, and, and watching this video, if you want to see more stuff about Coffee Lake, go on the different uh, on your favorite press website or YouTubers. Check the reviews. Check more than one source all the time. Always. Uh, go read Anantech. Go read the Tech Report. Go read like all those uh, big re big reviews that that I've been doing that for years. They know what they are talking about. They have no uh, interest or or slight. Uh, uh, fine boy, fine boyism. If we can, if we can say, uh, read always more than one uh, one article because the the testing yeah. uh, system is a little bit different from time to time, and people have their own opinion as well, which uh, is something that will uh, usually say in the conclusion. So yeah, uh, especially if you watch on YouTube, not only YouTube, uh, get to read the reviews on the website as well. Um, yeah, read them reviews and read as much as you can. It's always going to help because every website tests differently every website reports different things it's not necessary that you get you know one site has everything covered and there's different tests there's different stuff there's you know if you're a workstation guy then maybe you want to look at a different site that reports more to your liking so read just read there's lots of information out there all right, uh, moving on to the next news. Last week, uh, I was actually in Russia, and so does Wither T from Fine, which is the best overclocker in France. You made the travel all the way to Moscow and Russia to try to qualify for the overclocking world championship. And he did, and he did. He was like outnumbered seven to one by all the Russians. And uh, while well, he, he made his way through the qualifier, he was, I, he was, he made it through the, the qualifier and it was not the, not the first one in the, in the qualifier for that, for that segment, but it turns out to be very good in the one V one. So like the 30 minute matches. And uh, yeah, that was very well done by, uh, by Wizardy. There's a complete write-up article about the whole OCWC Moscow 2017 qualifier um, that was uh, run at Igromir. So that was on a trade show, on a booth at ASUS. Uh, honestly, that was compared to the previous event that were happening at different uh, kind of uh, shows like DreamHack and so on. This one was on a booth, like literally on a booth. That was like something quite difficult to uh, to, to catch up with. Um, participant in the OCWC were Dartmole, Ice Alex, uh, QEF, Smoke, Wizard T, Viper RD, Tractor, and Ateros. And uh, yeah, that was uh, the guys were having like quite a lot of fun. Uh, but uh, there was a lot of people passing by. I know that some of the some of the guys were like, especially Wizardy, because I was uh, taking some picture at the time. There was like a kid getting close to his system and he look at him and say, he's like, no, no, like don't get close. He's like, no, <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> peace out, dude. That's okay. As long as they don't touch the system, we're fine. <laughs> um, so to come back on the overclocking world championship 27, uh, 2017 qualifier in Moscow, uh, Ice Alex was the best one of the qualifier. Uh, first in all the three stages uh, that were on, um, 
on the three, Super Pi 32M, Cinebench R15, and 3D Mark 11 physics. Uh, Wizardy was actually second in all the stages as well. Then after that, I was a little bit uh, mixed. So we already had Ice Alex and Wizardy at the at the top of the qualifier, and then we had the uh, the, the final on Sunday, and that was uh, quite interesting to see like each of the guys to fight against each other, and that was uh, that was uh, very good to see. And um, in the end, the final match was Ateros against Wizardy, uh, 30 minutes. I remember that. Uh, it was Super Pi 8M, and I remember Wizardy was like, uh, okay, I don't veto this one, and the other one was like, okay, I'm sure I can do it as well. And yeah, it turned out that uh, it was it was interesting. And if you want some bits and insight about, I'm not sure that's actually written in the um, in in the write-up article on OC Esports. Like Wizardy managed to reach in like less than six minutes. He managed to reach the maximum of his CPU, and then after that, it was like just just tweaking a little bit what he can do. But on the other side, like Ateros was like struggling a little bit and then it was like setting base core and then climbing up, climbing up, climbing up, climbing up. So for the first 15 minutes, Wizardy was like, oh yeah, that's gonna be easy. And then for the last 15 minutes, it was like, oh damn, he's getting closer to me and he keep increasing his, his score, which is which was not the case for him. That was, uh, that was very interesting to see. And uh, well, once again, uh, well done to uh, GG to Wizard Team. He's gonna be joining, Evo is gonna be joining Step Hans from the US, Dan Cup from Germany, uh, Pichi Agassi from Brazil, Ersanino from Italy, and Dr. Wiz from Africa, along with Blue Fiber from Indonesia, to the OC World Championship uh, final by the end of the year. So, yeah, I mean, it took the guts to go all the way to Moscow, and now it's uh, that, 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 that's it. If you guys want to. Oh, shit, where's the play thing? Oh, yeah. Uh, if you guys want to see more videos about uh, how it uh, how it did, he did post some videos on uh, before his uh, qualifier and actually just before the final and uh, when he, he knew that he was actually winning, uh, you can go check that on uh, on his Facebook page, uh, facebook.com, and uh, that's Wizardy. I would just post that in the uh, in the live chat for you guys to check it out. So yeah, that was a that was a, a fun event. And that was alongside with the HWBot World Tour Moscow 2017, which was a very interesting one. And I really had a lot of fun to, to go there. I was just helping out, just giving a hand to the people, to the guys there. But I, I had way more time to actually take pictures than what was done like uh, a month ago in Montreal. And I was, as usual, you know, the... Uh, the regular workshop on the uh, on the different setup and things. Good thing was like the workshop were made on the 14, 16, and 18 core CPUs. So some of the guys were like, "Oh yeah, I know overclocking. I do that on my PCs." Like, have you tried the 18 core from Intel? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the wow, best. That, the must have, that must have been quite the surprise. How do you like land up and like get to bench on like a two thousand dollar CPU? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the the, the guys uh, coming in for the workshop, they loved it. And it was insane. It was in a container. I, I, I don't was know just going to come to that. Slick, huh? Slick, slick, guys. Slick, really slick. So, uh, um, to, to, uh, Bilzeri, what do you think about the container idea? Um, I've not seen... Okay. Um... So, it's basically like I the workshop know, were made in the container. It, it's... I, I, it was all paint white with the uh, HW um, World Tour like logo. The lighting setup, huh? I, I mean, it looks cool. It's just, it looks a little cramped. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, that, that was not like 200 people in the in, in there. So that's, that, that was okay. So I guess like the, it was nice that they, they could actually just focus on what they were working on right there. And there wasn't like, I guess, I, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, I've never been to one of these workshops. I probably will never be in one anyway. And if I am, then it'll probably be as a teacher and not as a <laughs> learning experience. So I'm not sure. It definitely, like, it looks cool from the pictures I've seen, but yeah, I, I don't know how well it works out for the people actually in the container. Actually, <laughs> so, it was more quiet than outside. Cause yeah, I figured so, that that would be a benefit. Like, uh, it would, wouldn't be so loud inside. So Okay, I, I had my ear buzzing, not because of the plane, because of the noise at the venue. It's insane. I mean, any of the other venues that we thought that was that were loud, okay, this one is yeah. like ten times louder. It's like it's you can barely hear each other. And actually, in the container that was 
less strong than outside. I don't say that was quiet, but that was much better than uh, than outside. So that was uh, that was something. Oh, there's something as well. Uh, someone I can't remember exactly who told us that. I think that's someone from one of the uh, retailer or someone at Intel in Russia. We had more CPU of the 14, 16, and 18 cores in the container than anywhere else in Russia. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> so you had more chips than any Russian retailer had. <laughs> yeah, basically. So that was like, oh, that, man, that's, that's, stuff. I mean, we, I, I did not have them. That was HW, but having them, but. Yeah, that was that was fun to you. That was that was a very uh, very nice event and a lot of people. If you guys want to see more pictures, go check them out on the uh, HW bot or on the uh, Facebook Overclocking TV to Overclocking TV uh, page as well. Um, so that's it for Moscow. That was last weekend, uh, but they already announced. So HW bot already announced the next one, which is gonna be in Melbourne, uh, in Australia, and that's gonna be running alongside of PAX Australia, which is gonna be during October 27th to October 29th. Uh, if you guys want to participate there, like all the uh, guys down under. You can purchase an LN2 ticket, and you can get there to uh, to have the um, uh, well, LN2 access and bench with it. So as uh, as all the other world tour, from what I understood, they will have workshop as well. This one is sponsored by Intel, Gigabyte, Seasonic, and Alpha Cool, which is uh, Intel, Seasonic, and Alpha Cool were actually the sponsor as well for the uh, for the one in Russia. So and on top of Asus ROG. So that's uh, that's cool to see the those partners to be like really dedicated to to providing workshop and making sure that the uh, Making sure that everyone can try out on uh, on 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 the overclocking hype, if we can say that. Uh, I guess that's going to be on the 14, 16, and 18 core again, unless they do uh, they do coffee lake. I have no uh, no idea about that yet. So uh, if you guys want to, if your guys are around uh, are around Melbourne and you're going to PAX, just go check it out. That's going to be uh, that's going to be great. And I wait, I can't wait to see like all the uh, OC guys actually showing up and uh, and being there. That should be cool. Yeah, yeah, that should be cool. All right, uh, so definitely, definitely lined up. Dinos and gang and everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would, yeah. I'm pretty sure that will come. All right, um, HCC CPU. We already talked about that. Uh, 7980X. Uh, and Nvidia is launching the 1070 Ti on 26th of October. Tullius. Yeah, yeah, that's coming. So what but, what is going on with this one? That's just, that was just a rumor just a few weeks ago, and now it's confirmed. It's pretty much confirmed. Yeah. Um, well, so basically, it's going to be somewhere in between the 1070 and the 1080, but very close to the 1080 from what from from like the looks of it, because the rumor mill still states it's going to carry GDDR5 X. If not. Uh, don't know yet. Don't know what the hell the memory is going to be on this card. But they're saying that it could be like the the. the I, 10 I heard it would be nine gigabits per second nine, GDDR5. Nine or ten, or yeah, or ten gigabit per second GDDR5X. I'm not too sure on what's actually going to come with this. I card. think if they put GDDR5X on it, then they're going to end up with it being way too damn close to the 1080. 1080. Uh, yeah. If they give it GDDR5, it's probably going to end up memory bottlenecked, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sure they sell 1080s, eh? Yeah. So, it does look like this is a response to Vega 56, pretty much. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. actually, that was my question. Do you think they did just put this one out on the market just to uh, to answer yeah, Vega? That's, that's pretty much what it is. It, yeah. Like, I mean, you're NVIDIA and you have this option to just, like, steamroll AMD into the ground for, like, who knows how long, then... You know, Intel had, what, five years of free reign? <laughs> yeah. It's like, who doesn't want that? <laughs> um, but I personally, I don't... Like, the thing about Vega 56 is that it's not really so much Vega 56 as it's Vega 64 with a slightly crappier BIOS. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. yeah. Out of the box, the 1070 Ti will beat a Vega 56, for sure. So, uh, for more advanced users, the Vega 56, like, if you don't care about the power consumption, Vega 56 crushes a 1070 Ti. It's literally a 1080, 1080 in, 
you know, at in Vega, basically the version, uh, like it'll catch up a 1080 if you just flash the BIOS. Yeah, uh, exactly. Exactly. Because it's, it's literally a Vega 64. And actually, yeah. funny thing is, it's like me and Gamers Nexus have actually seen that the Vega 56 cards seem to just clock better than the 64s anyway, which, like, so if you're going to be fine tuning these cards, you can make a Vega 56 like match a Vega 64 or a GTX 1080, no problem. And I can't see Nvidia making a 1070 Ti that yeah. will yeah. be yeah. that competitive yeah. with that their competitive. own higher end card, because like a 1080 can't even overclock to catch up to the Vega 64s. True, true, true. And in terms of, in terms of price as well, the uh, the 1070 Ti will be in between the 1070 and the 1080, which is it was quite a quite a gap. Uh, that's going to be around 400 uh, USD. Uh, the official yeah. price is not officially uh, announced. Uh, we will know on October 26. Uh, you can pre-order on 26, but everything will be delivered starting November 2, uh, November 2nd, according to uh, some of the rumors on videocards.com. Yeah, that's true. But but I mean, there's I, it'll make it really interesting from from even I know I'm going to go back to this and people I mean people probably won't like. Uh, are not that interested, but from a mining point of view, also I'm waiting to see what this card does. Does, does it suffer from the same fate as the 1080, which had the memory hole, or does this not? Well, if it doesn't have the 5x and it's done right, then it shouldn't have the memory. Yeah, hole. it could be the new weapon of choice for miners <laughs> if it's on GDDR5. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We, we will see what's going on with that. We have to, I guess, we have to wait uh, a good month before being sure that uh, that we can see exactly what the 1070 Ti would be able to do. All right, uh, so that's it for all the hardware news of uh, of this week. Let's uh, dive into some other news. Rob from Sweden wins the Galax GOC 2017 World War Qualifier, so he gets uh, in, uh, himself and uh, I think seven of the other guys a trip to Bangkok it's in Thailand. Well. I think yeah. it's 12. It's like... Oh, yeah, 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 true. They're taking... Yeah, because... Yeah, so they're taking 12. However, I think I've also heard that Ralph apparently doesn't want... Like, isn't able to go due to some obligations, so... Oh, boy. He's... It looks like it'll be the 12, 12 guys under him going. So that but. that might be uh, very lucky for the 13 guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. If, if we actually um, have a look at the, at the ranking... Uh, Oh, where's the final ranking leaderboard? I, I kind of regret not going for that competition because it ended up having a lot, very few people in it. <laughs> but... Because hmm. at the very end, it finished with 26 overclock overclockers total. Some of the guys didn't even manage to do all scores. So, yeah, I mean, even Alba got his card, what, maybe two days before the comp or something like that. I yeah, I, I saw it on, on Facebook. It was like, okay, I have two days left. The card yeah. is stuck in the customs. What do I do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was toying with the idea of, like, going into this one, but ultimately decided, eh, nah. I thought, like, I thought there would be more competition for it, but there was only 26 people. It's like... Uh, I don't know. But this one was like a very high price of entering as well. I mean, you you had to buy a 1080, uh, a 1080 yeah, Ti Galaxy and a Ti Lab Edition. So more than just this competition, like it's not from a benchmarking perspective, it's not that bad a card because you need a 1080 Ti for a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. um, but personally, what broke it for me was the RAM. I'm not paying for three three hundred dollars for a kit of B die, no matter how much you think it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sorry. It's like, yeah, it's probably some Uber bin, but I'm not paying three hundred bucks for RAM. No way. And that pretty much killed it for me. So yeah, because it was a memory requirement. Like I was okay with getting a card. I was not okay with the memory part. Yeah, um, but you could use any Galax. Yeah, any Galax, but they don't sell Galax in the UK. So, oh shit! <laughs> it's like the competition ended, and right now you can actually get like a decently priced Galax kit on OC UK, but the competition's over, so <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> doesn't work. Um, I don't know if Galax like if a Galax makes a commitment to making these a yearly thing, and they keep yeah. the whole any Galax memory restriction, then maybe I'll join next year. But it's sure. just like you don't know far enough in advance to to make plans. You know, it's right. like yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the final will be held in Thailand, in Bangkok, 
and that's gonna be mid-November if I'm uh, if I remember correctly around the 20th of November so that's uh, in a, a month and a half from now so that's gonna be very uh, very soon we don't know yet if there's gonna be any coverage live or any way to check the scoreboard I just know that HWBot will be there as the judge uh, so we'll have to uh, wait and see about what uh, will be announced and uh, by uh, by the organizer to, to about this uh, Galax DOC 2017 uh, event. All right, last topic for today is one uh, interesting one, and we had uh, quite a few discussion with it before starting the show. Is FutureMark is about to launch 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme. That's going to be 4K with DirectX 12. What we can expect from that is the same time spy as before, just a higher preset for it. And that's going to be the first 4K DirectX 12 benchmark that will be available in the uh, 3D Mark, uh, in the future Mark 3D Mark uh, benchmark. Uh, Bildred, what do you expect? Uh, what do you what do you think about that? So the the other thing they change with Time Spy Extreme is they have a new CPU physics test. <laughs> With AVX and AVX. With, with, it has AVX, so say hello to XTU's evil cousin. <laughs> <laughs> it's just more beautiful. It looks uh, a lot pretty, yeah, pr so prettier uh, relative. Um, and, uh, well, it is AVX. It's supposed to support processors with more than eight cores, so you can already see where why this came up <laughs> right now. Um, you know. Exactly. It's just, and it's a 4K benchmark for DirectX 12. Um, it's good, it, like, TimeSpy already doesn't run exactly at very high frame rates. So if yeah. you're going to be running this, this gonna on, like, any nice single show. card, you're going to be looking <laughs> at almost single digits. Yeah. So <laughs> say hello to the, the the biggest, greatest slideshow, like, for, for the rest of the year. Um, <laughs> and then the CPU part is, like, I really don't like the introduction of AVX2. Those instructions are extremely heavy. Um, it runs extremely hot, and it's just like this is an issue I've had with the 3D marks for a while now. It's just it says 3D mark, right? It should be a GPU benchmark, but they just keep making it hammer the CPU more and more and more, right? And th this is like great, so it can now use 18 cores. How many, like, because this is supposed to be like, didn't 3D mark used to be called the gamer's benchmark? It used to be it used to be the target for it, but it depends on which scene you use, and it moved over it's the like, years to no like a There's no game on earth that uses AVX two, <laughs> <laughs> and there's even fewer that use more than eight cores. Like there's very few that use eight cores to start with. So it's just, yeah, it's like you know if this was if this was just a GPU test, I'd be really excited for it because we lack a lot of pure GPU benchmarks. But this is just another three D mark. It's like, just another CD mark, yeah. With more what CPU I mean, work. What I do. would love to see it's is, just is why. <laughs> what I what 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 I'd actually 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 love to see is um basically a benchmark that eliminates like or a benchmark from them that actually eliminates um uh you know just like the so the full CPU side of it and just reports like a GPU score. So like just you know, that, yeah, I know. It's, yeah, it's, just, like actually that that kind of benchmark what, what's uh Interesting is I've been noticing that if I bench like on uh, x99 uh, versus like uh, KB Lake, then yeah. with a lot of GPUs, KB Lake actually scores better on graphics score, like a lot. Yeah. So if they did a pure GPU benchmark, you'd actually have a lot of these mainstream CPUs being really competitive in the 3D scene, which right now the benchmarks they're stuck on is like the old 3D marks, like 3D Mark 06 and older. Um, yeah. Which is really unfortunate, Jeanette. And then you have Unige in Heaven, which right now is a CPU test because it just spews out so many frames a second that it, it's like it runs at like what? If you use the extreme preset for Unige in Heaven, you're looking at something like 600 to even 1000 FPS in some cases. And it's just like their CPUs aren't keeping up with that. So no. I'm really sad that, you know, we're seeing like. It depends on the preset you use still. I mean, yeah, but we don't have a competitive high graphics usage preset. The the thing is, with, with this that, specific, what I'm sad about. with the Time Spy Extreme, uh, you don't need, for example, you don't need the 4K screen to run it, because that's going to oh. run the workload in 4K, but that's going to be displaying that in 1080. Uh, but you do need a graphic card with more than four gigs of RAM on it, which is going to be one of the requirements. Well, DirectX Direct, Direct, Direct 12, which is something that most of the people have on the new graphic cards and at least four gigs of RAM. 
I mean, we saw this with Firestrike Ultra, where that's a 4K benchmark as well. Yep. But it's like, it's this is just Firestrike Ultra on DirectX 12. So I'm honestly not that excited for it. And it has a heavier CPU test. So great. 3D yeah, is less 3D ATX than bit, ever. <laughs> ATX bit, I'm a little bummed. It's like, this is yeah. the least GPU 3D mark of all the 3D marks. I think Firestrike Ultra probably is more GPU bound than this. I'm not unless sure. like unless they mess with how the CPU score is weighted in the final overall score output, right? And but, actually, uh, you know what's funny? I could actually run it not now on my not now on my PC, of course, because I'm using the laptop for now. But I could actually build the PC in the after in the after party and run that benchmark live. Because well, I, you have access to the pre-release. I, I do have one. Yeah. Can I have it? <laughs> uh, I cannot share it. Yeah. I actually I need to I need to let, let me double check if I can if I can actually just uh display anything. I know that's going to be available for everyone uh, very soon. I guess that's going to be an auto update on uh when when is the date? Uh, let let me, let me drink the dig back the uh the email and I will uh I will see. I will need to check if I actually <laughs> if I can actually display anything from the <laughs> from the benchmark before the uh, the NDA left. Um, all right, we're going to take care of that in the after show now. Um, I guess that was uh, good enough for a one hour show of the OC show. That was the OC show season four, episode 13. We talked about a lot of lot of things. Kylic X uh, launched last week. Coffee Lake launched this week. A lot of competitions uh, did finish, but we focused only on the GUC. Uh, there was a lot of uh, new hardware to be released as well, like the 10 and 7 TTI that soon to become. Uh, we're talking about new benchmark as well, uh, along with Buildzood and Tullius. Uh, and uh, guys, uh, stay around here. Stay tuned, because we're going to do into the after party. If you watch this video on YouTube, give us a thumbs up if you like. Share that with your friends if you think the content was, uh, was worth it. If you want to see something specific, let us know in the comments. We always read all the comments on the YouTube videos. So let us know if you have any questions for the guest, any question about what we discuss, or if you want to see something in the next OC show. Up until next time, keep pushing it. Thank you to you. Thank you, Bill Zoid. Appreciate your time. Pleasure. Bye-bye. How do I stop this? No.